Hello students, welcome to EPG Partsala. I am Dr. Chirantan Rawal from Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Government College, Silvasa, that is in UT of Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Today, we are going to discuss about control of citric acid cycle. This is a part of a paper, Carbohydrate Metabolism. So students, in control of citric acid cycle, we need to understand some basic points. Our target over here is to understand the basis of citric acid cycle, how it is a central part of a metabolic hub. We will, we will overview the citric acid cycle and the enzymes of a TCA cycle. There are many factors which affect the citric acid cycle and there are certain checkpoints where we can regulate the citric acid cycles. We explore the significance of the citric acid cycles. We try to understand the concept of anapleurotic reactions. The TCA cycle is a metabolic hub. Citric acid cycle or a TCA cycle that is called tricarboxylic acid cycle or more popularly it is known as a Krebs cycle. Sir Hans Adolf Kreb, a German biochemist and physician laid the foundation of studying this cellular respiration and energy biosynthesis. TCA is also regarded as the central metabolic pathway for the energy generations within the cells. The citric acid cycle is the common terminal point for all metabolic pathways to generate the energy from the fuel in the form of biomolecules such as amino acids, fatty acids as well as carbohydrates. There are many reactions involve certain key enzymes that help in the generation of energy through either ATP or reduced electron acceptors like NADH, FADH2, GTP. There are many key enzymes which plays an important role in the TCA cycle. That includes pyruvate dehydrogenase, acotinase, isocitrate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate, dehydrogenase complex, succinyl CoA synthase, succinate dehydrogenase, fumarase, malate dehydrogenase, citrate synthase. Introduction The citric acid cycle is the central hub for metabolic pathways. It is popularly known as tricarboxylic acid cycle as well as Krebs cycle to honor the inventor of this central metabolic path point. The citric acid cycle is the common terminal point for all metabolic pathways to generate energy from fuel in form of biomolecules such as amino acids, fatty acids as well as carbohydrate. In eukaryotes, TCA cycle reaction takes place in mitochondria while glycolysis which occurs in the cytoplasm. In case of prokaryotes, both glycolysis and TCA cycle occurs in the cytoplasm. Here in mitochondria, a series of oxidation and reduction reaction occurs which result in oxidation of acetyl group of two carbon dioxide molecule while reducing the coenzyme. The reduced coenzyme can be reoxidized through electron transport chain which is clubbed with energy generation reaction. This slides explain a concept map that is of TCA cycle. This slide explains about how it works as a metabolic hub. You can see in the diagram that interrelation of the this pathway with other pathway, how it is correlated with the synthesis of amino acids and other biomolecules. This image represents the typical TCA cycle where acetyl coenzyme A is getting converted into citrate to alpha ketoglutrate to succinate malate, oxaloacetate and again the synthesis of citrate. 
with respective release of the NADH, ATP, GTP at respective reactions. Stop. This slide represents the schematic representation of various enzymes of TCA cycle. This is a schematic representation that allows two different pathways by which glycogenolysis occurs in cell. The various enzymes include pyruvate dehydrogenase, acotinase, isocytrate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, succinyl coenzyme synthase, succinate dehydrogenase, fumarase, malate dehydrogenase, and citrate synthase. This explains the overview of citric acid cycle and its enzyme. Over here, first a 4 carbon compound that is oxaloacetate fuses with the 2 carbon acetal moiety to yield a 6 carbon tricarboxylic acid that is citrate through a condensation reaction that is an aldol condensation. Thereafter, an oxidative decarboxylation reaction occurs that converts citrate into its isomeric form for removal of a molecule of carbon dioxide which results into the formation of 5 carbon compound that is alpha ketoglutarate. A similar reaction occurs again that selectively converts 5 carbon compound that is alpha ketoglutarate into a 4 carbon compound that is succinate by oxidatively decarboxylation. Now, oxaloacetate is later being regenerated from 4 carbon compound succinate by a series of reactions through a formation of fumarate and malate, which may have be visible in the previous slides. 2 carbon atom enters the cycle as an acetal moiety while 2 carbon atom leaves the cycle in the form of 2 molecule of carbon dioxide. Oxygen which is required for the citric acid cycle indirectly as much as it is the electron acceptor at the end of electron transport chain which is necessary to regenerate NAD and FAD. 3 hydride ions are being sifted to three molecules of NAD plus while a pair of hydrogen atom is being transferred to one molecule of FAD. The chief function of the TCA cycle is the harnessing of energy rich electrons for carbon fuel molecules. TCA cycle thus provides a precursor molecule like amino acid and other reducing agent like NADH. FDH2 that can be used in various other biochemical reactions. The citric acid cycle in conjunction with the oxidative phosphorylation provides the vast majority of energy used by aerobic cells in human beings greater than 95%. The above reactions are catalyzed by at least 8 different enzymes whereas the entry of acetal moiety into the cycle is regulated by the action of the key enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. This particular enzyme is responsible for the conversion of pyruvate to acetal coenzyme A which is getting enter into the TCA cycle. This slide explains how pyruvate is getting converted into acetal coenzyme A. This slide explains how citrate is getting converted into isocitrate with intermediate formation of cis aconitate. This slide explains the role of isocitrate dehydrogenase in the formation of alpha ketoglutarate. It explains the conversion of alpha ketoglutarate into the succinyl coenzyme A. It explains how succinyl coenzyme A is getting converted into succinate with the help of succinyl 
a synthetase. It explains the role of succinate dehydrogenase in conversion of succinate into a fumarate. How fumarate is getting converted into malate? Over here, the fumarase enzyme plays an important role. Last step, that is a regeneration of oxaloacetate. This explains the conversion of malate into the oxaloacetate with the help of malate dehydrogenase. Over here, we are recovering the oxaloacetate back into the reaction. This explains the role of citrate synthase where acetylcoenzyme A and oxaloacetate combines to give a citrate that is a 6 carbon molecule. The control points of the TCA cycle are the enzymes mentioned above and acetyl-CoA the fuel molecule for the initiation of the pathway. Main enzymes for the formation of acetyl-coenzyme A is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex that is PDH and it is activity is easily inhibited by ATP, NADH, fatty acid and acetyl-CoA by allosteric inhibition covalent modification. Generally Purpose of the TCA cycle is what? To get more and more energy. If NADH, ATP is in more amount is available within the cell, then the cell will not prefer to go for TCA cycle. And that's why it is allosterically inhibited by ATP, NADPH, as well as it is also in, uh, inhibited by covalent modification. Additionally, NADH and acetyl coenzyme A act as an activator while pyruvate, ADP, coenzyme A, calcium ions, magnesium ions act as an inhibitor for PDH kinase. On the contrary, the PDH phosphatase activity is boosted by the magnesium and calcium. Citrate synthase is allosterically inhibited by both ATP as well as long chain fatty acyl CoA. ATP, NADH and succinyl coenzyme A also act as an inhibitor while ADP plays a role of activator. So obviously, why ADP plays a role of activator? In which condition ADP will be more in the cell? When the more and more ATP is utilized, that ATP is getting converted into ADP. And that's why ADP act as what? Activator. While the ATP itself is inhibitor. Isocitrate dehydrogenase activity is inhibited by NADH and ATP. Again the same concept, more ATP is there, more NADH is there, the cell having a more energy. So they may not go to for, go for TCA cycle. In contrast, it is allosterically activated by ADP. Same story, ADP activates, ATP inhibits. As it enhances affinity towards the substrate, over here ADP Allosterically activates it, which ultimately do what? Enhance their affinity towards the substrate. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is inhibited by succinyl coenzyme A, NADH, and ATP, while activity is stimulated by calcium ions. Succinate dehydrogenase activity is regulated concentration of oxaloacetate inside the mitochondrial matrix. Which, turn, which in turn depends on malate dehydrogenase activity. Malate dehydrogenase activity depends on the ratio of NADH to NAD plus and is regulated by the shape. Factors affecting citric acid cycle and control points, that is its regulation. Like glycolysis, TCA cycle 2 can be regulated at two levels, that is at the entry level of substrate and at certain key steps that are catalyzed by the enzymes. The chief control point of citric acid cycle is believed to be the point of entry of fuel molecule, the acetyl coenzyme A. Formation of this moiety from various carbohydrate sources act as major regulatory checkpoints. The reaction is an enzyme catalyzed reaction and pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. The activity of this enzyme complex is easily inhibited by ATP, NADH, fatty acids and acetyl-CoA. 
the PDH complex can be regulated by allosteric modification and covalent modification. PDH complex is allosterically inhibited by acetyl-CoA and NADH while it is activated by the non-acetylated CoA and NAD+. The covalent modification of the PDH activities are dependent on the stages of phosphorylation modulated by a specific kinase that is PDH kinases and dephosphorylation catalyzed by the phosphatases. Citrate synthase is allosterically inhibited by both ATP as well as long chain fatty acyl coil, ATP, NADH, succinyl coil also act as an inhibitor while ADP plays a role of activator. Isocitrate dehydrogenase activity is inhibited by NADPH. Take isocitrate dehydrogenase activity is inhibited by NADH and ATP. In contrast, it is allosterically activated by ADP as it enhances affinity towards the substrate. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is inhibited by succinyl CoA, NADH, and ATP while activity is stimulated by calcium ions. Succinate dehydrogenase activity is regulated. Concentration of oxaloacetate inside the mitochondrial matrix, which in turn depends on the malate dehydrogenase activity. Malate dehydrogenase activity is heavily dependent on the the ratio of NADH and NAD ions. This slide explains how enzymes are being regulated. It's a brief summary where activators and inhibitors are listed. So you, this is in general a summary of the previous slides. Significance of citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle is the only pathway for conversion and interchange of metabolites formed in a cell by various metabolic processes of amino acid, fatty acid as well as carbohydrate. It mainly provides substrate for various deamination and transamination reaction of amino acid metabolism. Since it plays a dual role both as catabolic and anabolic process, it is often called amphibolic pathway. Citric acid cycle plays a vital role in energy generation, thereby involved in number of catabolic process. The citric acid cycle is the usual but ultimate pathway for the oxidation of number of intermediates including carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. This is quite regular since glucose, fatty acids, and majority of amino acids are metabolized to form acetyl coenzyme A or other intermediates of the TCA cycle. The function of the citric acid cycle is said to be vital because it provides energy rich electrons from carbon skeleton. One acetate unit approximately produces 12 moles of ATP with each cyclic term. The TCA cycle is also regarded to be anabolic in nature as a number of intermediates are produced by it are capable for biological synthesis or built up of numerous cellular compounds. Citric acid cycle generates intermediates that potentially involved in gluconeogenesis. Since TCA intermediates forms oxaloacetate which paves the way for further decarboxylation and conversion mediated by phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase to give glucose. Of course, it occurs in liver, kidney. Citric acid cycle also plays major role in biosynthesis of certain essential and non-essential amino acids via reversible transamination reactions. Moreover, it also avails the body with carbon skeleton necessary for biosynthesis of amino acids like alanine, aspartate, aspergine, glutamate, glutamine, lysine, methionine, 
threonine and isoleucine. Citric acid cycle is also involved in biosynthesis of fatty acids via a key intermediates that is acetylcholine. The action of PDH converts pyruvate to acetylcholine A, a major substrate for the long chain fatty acid biosynthesis. Citric acid cycle is involved indirectly in synthesis of hemoity as succinyl-CoA condenses with the amino acid glycine to form an alpha amino beta keto adipic acid which is a precursor for heme biosynthesis. TCA intermediates like glutamate and aspartate are precursor for purine and pyrimidine biosynthesis which in turn is involved in formation of white biomolecules of cell that is DNA. These typical diagrams explain how citric acid cycle is correlated with metabolism of other biomolecules like fatty acids and steroids like purines, heme group, pyrimidines, amino acids as well as glucose. Anapleurotic reactions Anapleurosis here means restoring various intermediates of citric acid cycle that has been used in various reactions mentioned above in amphibolic processes of a cell. Here the intermediates are formed into the cyclic pathways that had been previously extracted for various biosynthesis popularly called catapleuritic reactions. As earlier mentioned TCA cycle is a metabolic hub with a hub of metabolism with vital importance in both energy yielding and biosynthesis processes. Thus it is critical for the cell to maintain intracellular concentration of various intermediates. Steady state will only be maintained when the anapleuritic flux is balanced by the catapleuritic flux of TCA cycle intermediates during cellular metabolism. So students, let's summarize what we have learned in this module. Since TCA cycle is very important, at the same time it is very important to regulate the TCA cycle. TCA cycle provides the fuel that is ATP that is very important to carry out all metabolic functions. We can say ATP is a currency, energy currency of the cell. The ATP, ADP, AMP, NADH, NAD has a crucial role in the regulation of the TCA cycle. We try to conclude this session by seeing what is anapleuritic and catapleuritic reactions. The pathway is well coordinated as well as has inputs to various other pathway as well as where it controls the formation of protein from amino acid intermediates, lipid synthesis by controlling the fatty acid intermediates and carbohydrate synthesis by controlling the sugar derivatives through this pathway. So TCA cycle you just imagine over here, it has the intermediates to feed other pathways and if we are controlling the feed of the TCA cycle, if we are controlling the TCA cycle itself, then certainly it is going to affect the other pathways. As you know that amino acid is required for the protein synthesis. Fatty acid is required for the synthesis of lipids. Monomers of the carbohydrate is required for the synthesis of polymers. So these monomers, these amino acids, these fatty acids, intermediates are controlled. Their production, their outcome is controlled with the help of what? The TCA cycle intermediates. TCA cycle intermediates provides the precursor for many other pathways. Moreover, Citric acid cycle is the only pathway for conversion as well as interchange of metabolites formed in a cell by various metabolic processes of amino acids, fatty acids as well as carbohydrates. So citric acid cycle provides the platform for the interconversion of the for the interconversion of the various biomolecules. That's why it is said that Citric acid cycle is the only pathway for the conversion as well as interchange of metabolites formed in a cell 
by various metabolic processes of amino acids, fatty acids as well as carbohydrates. Since it has a dual role for both catabolic and anabolic reactions, it is called amphibolic pathway. Why it is called an amphibolic pathway? Since it has a role in both in catabolic as well as anabolic reactions and that is why it is termed as amphibolic pathway. Now let us explore what is anaplerosis. Anaplerosis means restoring various intermediates of the citric acid cycle and that has been used in various reaction of the amphibolic processes of the cells. Means whenever the TCA cycle is operated, the TCA, intermediates of the TCA cycle is used for other pathways, for fatty acid, for amino acids and to restore these intermediates that is nothing but the anaplerosis. Here the intermediates are reformed or refeed into the cyclic pathway that had been previously extracted for various biosynthesis popularly that is known as catapleuritic reactions.